This episode is sponsored by NordVPN. Here, a darter fish looks for a morsel of... Oh, sh**. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, I didn't know clams ate fish. Well, first off, that right there is a mussel, and calling it a clam is offensive. And second of all, that's a lady mussel, and what she's doing is squirting baby juice all over that fish's face parts. And by baby juice, I mean juice that's made out of real babies. It's embarrassing is what it is. <laughs> And now that Ethel saw it, it'll be the talk of Fishtown. Old Dale got a face full of baby juice. <laughs> well, I should explain. Let's back up a bit. Freshwater mussels in the order Unionida are found in rivers and streams around the world. Now the thing about being a freshwater mussel is that you're essentially a rock with a pair of lips. And it can be challenging to, <laughs> to do anything. Oop, <laughs> we got a feisty one. So when it comes to making babies, they have to get creative. Now the male mussel's job is straightforward, literally. <laughs> he simply releases his sperm into the water, a task perfectly suitable for a creature so limited in its doingness. And there they are, that's some mussel sperm right there. The one in the top right looks like fun. <laughs> now sometimes the sperm comes in balls. <laughs> it's a tough grouping of words, <laughs> but they do, look at this. It can look a bit chaotic in there. But eventually, they all group together on one side with their little tails hanging out and push in the same direction. Come on, boys, we're going that way. <laughs> Why, what's that way? Who knows, we're in a river. Downstream, the females, which can look quite female, receive the sperm. I'm not sure how. I guess maybe there's a lot of it. And then they use it to fertilize their eggs. There are quite a few eggs, but until they are appropriately shelled, she raises them all in her cozy one-bedroom apartment. The little babies are quite muscleish. They have their mother's looks. However, they have a little bit of a toothy grin. And when you open them up, you can see there's more inside. Up close, it looks like a candy corn farm. But in some species, these hooks can be a bit frightening. Bands of muscle that stretch across the shell can contract and make the whole thing pinchy-pinchy. Look, you can even see some of the sensory hairs that trigger that movement. And those threads there are also designed to help grab onto things. All of these bells and whistles are in preparation for what happens next. Now our friend Dale happened to run into a muscle in the genus Epioblasma. They're the ones that might have the most straightforward approach. Fish like Dale often forage for food by turning over little stones and pebbles, and maybe occasionally a muscle or two. After getting rolled around like that, you can imagine they might want some payback. So Epioblasma evolved the ability to snap shut and hold on to the face of these fishes. <laughs> Look at his face. <laughs> He's like, what the f***? And it's a tight squeeze, too. Some species use little teeth to hold on. And look, some evolved what look like little tasty fish eggs to draw the fish closer. I mean, it's not that impressive. You'll see. Now, this isn't just some sort of fish face fetish. If you look closely, you can see the mummy muscle sort of pulsing. What she's doing is making herself into a sort of bellows forcing water through the fish's mouth and out of its gills. And along with that water comes the babies. The chompy little babies of freshwater mussels are designed for this moment. As they pass through the fish's gills, they grab on. And not just a few of them, a whole bunch. The gill tissue responds by wrapping itself around the larva, sort of incorporating it into the fish's body. But for most mussels, this only works if it's the right species of fish. Grab onto the wrong gills and the tissue will eventually reject you. Like this one here, which is about to get pinched off. And it's not just the gills. The larva can attach to the fins as well. Anyway, now you can probably better appreciate what's happening to old Dale here. I mean, he really got the full package. Eventually, the mummy mussel lets go. And for some reason, <laughs> Dale decides to come back. <laughs> probably trying to drop off the hitchhikers right back where they came from. But they're not going anywhere. The tissue of the fish will now provide them with the safety and nourishment they need as they develop. Now, not every mussel wants to deep throat a fish face. And some fish, quite frankly, are just too big to fit. But there are ways to get a fish close enough. But before we get into that, let me tell you. You don't have to worry about muscle babies attaching themselves to your face parts. But when you're online, you're going to pick up some trackers and cookies. Not meltaways either. Sneaky cookies. Just look at that 
creepy invisible man there being creepy. So if you're serious about privacy, like this one here who removed his own face, you'll get yourself NordVPN, takes your online activity and encrypts it, which makes it look like gibberish to the snoops. Then your activity is sent through a server in another location, so you can't tell where it came from. And all of this has some benefits. For example, some internet service providers throttle your bandwidth if they can detect that you're streaming movies. If it's encrypted, they can't tell what you're doing, and they have to go throttle something else. I know what you're saying. What about the creepy invisible people at the cafe? Well, NordVPN has you covered because it's more than just a VPN. With threat protection, your downloads are scanned for malware, and URLs containing digital threats are blocked before they can do their dirty work. Check it out at nordvpn.com slash zayfrank. You'll find an exclusive deal and a 30-day money-back guarantee. And because it's NordVPN's 11th birthday, you'll get a little something extra on top. And while you're at it, thank them for sponsoring this episode. Where were we? Oh, right. Some mussels in the genus Lampsilis have evolved a modification to their lips. I mean, technically their mantle, but I'm sticking with lips. This sh right here makes those fake fish eggs look like a kindergarten arts and crafts project. Look at that, they got the whole package, the looks, the movement. I bet it confuses the hell out of the fish they're trying to mimic. You think you found a good listener for your problems, turns out to be a f***ing muscle. But when the right fish approaches for a nibble, surprise, <laughs> baby confetti. If you slow it down, you can see the babies being forced through the gills of the fish. A bit of a fancier strategy, but the same end result. And it's not just fishes either. Muscles have changed their lips to look like all sorts of crap. I mean, if you want something fancy, look at this one right here. Wait for it. <laughs> there it goes. It's a little crayfish. <laughs> then you get to the end, you gotta reset it. Zoop, ding. And look at this. They come in evening wear too. Medianitis conbraticus, on the other hand, went for subtlety. I'm not totally sure what it's supposed to be, but I get it. I mean, I want to touch it. You got Legumi erecta, which looks a bit like a pair of dentures that got lost in a shag carpet. It's pretty great, isn't it? But listen, you don't have to go through all this body modification to get your babies into a fish's mouth. It turns out you can serve them up directly. Some mussels package up their babies into little bundles called conglutinates. These little bundles are designed to look like things that fish might eat, and they're released directly into the water. There they go, and the fish ride after them. And look at this, the fish come right back. It's like a vending machine that you pay for with kisses. <laughs> A couple more, come on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yay! Some of these conglutinates are fairly straightforward, like these little ribbons released by Theloderma cylindrica. Up close you can see that they're made of strands of unfertilized eggs with chompy larvae mixed in. Strophytus undulatus embeds its larva into little worms of mucus. In some species, pigments are added in for additional effect. With a toolbox of eggs, mucus, and paint, it turns out you can make all sorts of things. Look at this one right here. The dark stuff is pigment. When this thing is released, it's designed to break apart into two different fakies. One half looks like a developing fish egg. The other half looks like the larva of an insect, and it has a sticky side so it could attach to rocks. These mussels in the genus Tychobranchus are particularly ambitious. I mean, this is some Da Vinci sh** right here. Those little whiskers there are just streaks of pigment in the mucus, and the whole thing looks quite a bit like the pupa of a black fly. Conglutinates like these little number two pencils here are formed inside the mummy muscle in folds of tissue that act as molds. You can see a whole bunch right there, packed together like a belt of ammo. The level of detail can be quite incredible, certainly enough to fool a fish. Now they don't have to taste good to work. <laughs> you can see the fish is getting a little burpy. <laughs> and there you go, you can see it leaking out the gills. I mean, the job's done before the fish gets a chance to spit it back out. Conglutinates are essentially little Trojan horse pinatas just waiting to pop. In some cases, they're designed so the babies come out where the fake eyeballs are. Yoink, pop, huh. and it's over. And it just keeps going. Some species have a full-on fishing setup. Here, look, there's a muscle right there in the middle of the screen. And then that thing there? That's a lure attached to a mucus tether that the muscle sort of reels out. And come on, it totally looks like it's swimming, doesn't it? Here's a better look at it. Looks like you sneezed out your pituitary. I mean, it is quite a bit of effort, isn't it? All this work to get your babies onto the gills of a fish. Why? Why the fish? Well, if they just release their babies into the current, then every generation would move further downstream. The fishes are like taxis that bring a certain percentage of the babies back upstream. There, they detach from the fish, mostly leaving it no worse for the wear. And the little babies can settle down and start the whole process all over again. 
Well, sort of. Except for the whole extinction thing, which seems to be happening to them, which is a bummer. Don't tell them, because they can't read, so they have no idea. Might be better not to know. Anyway, if you want to try and help get your feet wet, apparently in rivers full of mussel sperm, you can support the Freshwater Mollusk Conservation Society. Check them out at mollusksconservation.org. Mm-hmm.